Now, my fair Hippolyta, ah, nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon. But oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. It lingers my desires. Like a stepdame or a dowager, long withering out a young man's revenue. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly drain away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bent in heaven, shall behold a night of ah solemnities. Ah, go for the straight. Stop up the Athenian youth to merriment. If hot, I woo thee with my sword, and won thy love doing the injuries, but I will wed thee with another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with revenue. I be Theseus, a renowned duke. Ah, thanks, Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I, of complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. Step forward, Demetrius. Noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry him. Step forward, Lysander. This man hath bewitched the breast of my daughter. With cunning has thou filched my daughter's heart. Turned her obedience, which is due to me, bitter harshness. And, gracious the Lord, be it so that she will not this day consent to marry with Demetrius, I claim the ancient right of Athens. As she is mine, so may I dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law, immediately provided for at this time. And what say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. To you, your father should be as a god, one who composed your beauties, yea, and one to whom you are but a form in wax, by him imprinted and within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. And himself he is, but wanting your father's voice, the other must be held away. I wish my father would look one with my eyes. Rather your eyes with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me, if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die a death, or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, know of your youth, examine well your blood, whether if you yield not to your father's choice you can endure the livery of a nun. But earthlier. Happier is the rose distilled than that which, withering on the virgin thorn, grows, lives, and dies in single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin patent up unto his lordship, unto whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the seething day betwixt my love and me, for everlasting bond of friendship. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Swore <laughs> for Lysander. True, he hath my love, and what is mine my love shall render him, and she is mine. And all my right of heart, I do estate in Demetrius. My lord, I am as well derived as he is, well possessed. My love is more than his. Demetrius, I'll about it to his head, made love to Nadar's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, oh sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted <laughs> and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought and spoke thereof. But being overfull of self affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come and come as yes. You shall go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means we may extenuate to death or to a vow of single life. Come, my apologies. What cheer my life? Demetrius, as yes, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptial and confer on you something of which nearly that concerns yourself. With duty and desire we follow. Oh, now, 
her love, why is thy cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? You like for want of rain, which I could well be team them from the tempest of my eye. Mm, a good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee? And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. And if thou lovest me, then steer forth thy father's house tomorrow night. And in the wood, a league without the town, there will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, oh, I swear to thee, my Cupid's strongest bow, or the best arrow with the golden head. Oh, by all the vows that men have ever broken, can number more than women ever spoke. Oh, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Oh, well, keep promise, my love, keep promise. Aye, here comes Helen. God speed for Helen, whither away? Call you me fair, that fair again on say. Demetrius loves you are fair. Oh, happy fair, your eyes are loath stars, and your tongue sweet air more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear when wheat is green, when hawthorn buds appear. Sickness is catching. Oh, where favour so. Yours will I catch fair Hermia ere I go. My ear should catch your voice, my eye your eye. My tongue should catch your tongue's sweet melody. Where the world mine, Demetrius being baited, the rest I give to be to you translated. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns could teach my smiles such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. <laughs> His father, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty would that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself shall fly this place. Helena, to our minds we will devise. Tomorrow night, through Athens' gates, have we devised to steal. And in the wood, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and hence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Oh, farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us. Good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. <coughs> Keep word, Lysander. We must starve our sight from lovers' food until tomorrow, deep midnight. Oh, I will, my Hermia. <laughs> <laughs> Helena, adieu, as you on him. Demetrius, don't on you. <laughs> How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind, and therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is so oft beguiled. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. <coughs> Tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain to have his sight thither and back again. <laughs> <laughs>